can do it. Well, then do it. This wagon train's gonna roll in a few minutes. Well, just don't stand and look at me, Mr. Chris. I told you I could do it. So do it, then. I'm doing it because I want to do it, and don't push me. Nobody's pushing you, Charlie. We're just giving you moral support. Now I don't have enough morals of my own, huh? We know how hard it is to sell a friend down the river, Charlie. Hill ain't no friend. Well, we know what you're up against, Charles. Yeah, you do, huh? Well, tell me how many times you held life and death in your hands. Just tell me, tell me. Well, time's wasting, Charlie. Make up your mind. You know how I feel. I'm glad I'm not Hill. What kind of stomachs you fellas got anyway? You ought to know. Been eating that food you dish out. <laughs> I'm sure glad I'm not Hilda. My life depended on you. <laughs> Shh, Hilda. One more honk out of you and you'll be a good goose. One more honk now. Bill, I'll see you in a little bit. Bonnie? You and Don about ready? Chris is getting up ahead of steam. As soon as he settles up with the doctor, we're ready. You uh, haven't seen Barney, have you? On our way here, I saw him going into the sheriff's office with a very pretty girl who isn't with our wagon train. The sheriff's office with a pretty girl? How long ago was that? Oh, I misplaced my timepiece. It was well over an hour ago. You mean it took the doctor that long to tell you you were going to have a baby? He didn't know the Brooks or Stone broke. He examined me like he was getting paid by the minute. Maybe I better go in and bail Don out. Don't you dare. He's beside himself now with all the money he's had to take from you all. Oh, Don? I was telling your bride that the Chris is breathing down his hired hands next, getting you all ready to roll. Thanks, sir. Uh... Don't worry about us. Like I said, I'm just doing my job. Look, uh, I'd like a minute alone with my wife, if you don't mind. Don, you forgetting what a good friend Coop has been? I'm not forgetting a thing. I know every cent I owe him and, and the others now. I don't care what you or anybody else thinks. Just go your own way and leave us alone. Wait a minute, Don, you... Coop, please. Don's not himself. You better have a good reason, Don. Why? I didn't ask you for anything. I don't have to tell you a thing. Coop, please leave us alone. Can't you see Don's not himself? Well, I don't know what's eating my good friend. But if you need anything, just sing out. From now on, we won't need help from you or anybody else. And you're all riled up. If there's anything I can do, just let me know. Look, you don't understand. I'm through being pushed around. Please, Coop. I'm sorry, Bunny. I can't do any more than try. Don, are you out of your head? Yes, sir. What happened in there? What did the doctor want from you? We're not going on with the wagon train. Don, what's the matter? Bonnie, if... if anything should happen to you and the baby, I... I'd never be able to forgive myself. The doctor told you something about me, didn't he? If you don't have special attention, I... What? We're going to get it, no matter how much it costs. Where are we going to get money? There's nothing left to sell. I'll get the money. One way or another.
Annabelle's father's the sheriff here, Mr. Chris, and uh, she was just giving me a few facts about crime detecting, that's all. Uh, well, you kiss her goodbye and get to work before I give you some of the facts of life. Yes, Mr. Chris. sure told me a lot, and it's going to be kind of hard to say goodbye. Hey! Let go of that girl and grab the dude. She didn't tell you how to catch goose, did she? Hilda, come back here! Hilda! Hilda! Barnaby! Goodbye, Annabelle. never did tell me why he had to have the money. Coop, he's got me out of my mind. How does he expect to get anything out of the bank? They don't even know him. I don't know. Don't tell him I talked to you. It could be all he needed. You don't figure he's loco enough to try to force money out of him, do you? The way he was carrying on, he's liable to do anything. Maybe I better get over there. No, he'd be furious with you. Well, what do you want me to do, Bonnie? Just stay with me till he comes back. I'm afraid to wait alone. I'm scared, Coop. I'm scared. I uh, need at least a thousand dollars. Sit down. Sit down. <laughs> yeah, that's a tidy sum, but uh, that's our business, and after all, that's why we're here. I need it right away. Well, if it isn't Jack Evans. Well, I'm, uh, I'm flattered that you remember me. It's been more than a year, isn't it, since we uh, first did... Oh, howdy, Brooke. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt your business dealings. Oh, are you two friends? No, not exactly. We're just traveling with Chris Hale's wagon train together. Say, that's... Uh, that's a nice little wife you got. Nice catch for a school teacher. No, uh, no offense intended. No offense intended. Well, your kind ought to know. My kind, huh? How do you like that? I do a favor for his wife. I give her ten times what the gold nose trinkets is worth just because she happens to be a looker. I wouldn't have given you the right time of day, Mr. Bookworm. Uh, Miss Brook. <laughs> If you'll just fill out this loan application form, right here in the other room, please. I'll be with you in a few minutes. Well, now, uh, what can I do for you this time, Mr. Evans? What can you do for me, huh? <laughs> I like that. You've been getting rich asking no questions of my kind, haven't you? Well, if you don't like doing business with me, you can take your trinkets somewhere else. Where? <laughs> You're the only legal crook in these parts. What do you expect to get for this junk? Two thousand, and you're stealing it from me. I'll give you a thousand. A thousand? <laughs> this diamond is worth more than just one thousand. And don't tell me to keep quiet. I, I worked hard for this stuff. I didn't find it in the street. You're not going to steal it from me. I'll make it 1500 and that's it. Uh, I'm an honest businessman. I could have trouble with your kind of collateral. Trouble? You'll melt that gold down and break those stones out quicker than I can skin a widow. 
No. One of these days. <laughs> Gonna find a way of getting on the right side of the law and getting back every nickel you ever fleeced me out of. Is it a deal? Give me the 1500 Yeah. Someday, I'll get back everything you owe me. Uh, you're too smart, Mr. Evans, never to point a gun at a banker. Oh, you're like me. We operate legally. need a co-signer to get money with paper. Tell you what, I'll sign for you. Just to show you that my heart's in the right place. Will you give me the money if he signs too? Well, you'll need the signature of someone the bank knows if you don't have any collateral. Well, what do you need? What do you have? My word. And a pretty wife. And this is for her. Right? Of course it's right. Why else would I eat crow? Gentlemen? Would you mind? I'm in a hurry. Now you earn ten dollars a week teaching. That's right. Now why are you going west? Well, I have a job waiting for me. You need the money for medical expenses. Back in St. Louis? My wife could die in childbirth if she isn't hospitalized. Well, it's all there. You get your money and your interest. What else do you want from me? Thousand dollars after expenses out of your salary, that, that is, if you get the job. Well, you've got my word. Now, you get your money and your interest. Your word? <laughs> well, I'm afraid it isn't worth any more than Jack Evans' signature. Well, you lent him the money. Now, if you have any valuables, then I, I'll ask you no questions, but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, this is, this is worthless. You said you'd take it. You said you'd take it. For your pretty wife. So that you can... Ah! Ah! Why? Ah! Ah!
human mind is capable of unspeakable crimes. Don Brooke didn't go in to rob that bank. We only knew what happened in there. This officer Toulouse from Scotland Yard is expert on crime and detection, says only the facts count. You can't get emotionally involved. Bonnie loses her husband and baby the same day, and that's a fact. How could she not be? What did that defective from Scotland say? <laughs> Emotionally involved, Charlie. Well, you any good to get emotionally involved. Well, now, he didn't mean Bonnie. He calls her a victim of circumstance. Says, the next of kin cannot be expected to be rational, and it is quite possible they may well become completely irrational. That Toulouse should have his neck in a noose. Bonnie ain't no more the same girl that she was before she lost her baby, and Don got killed coming out of that bank with the money than I am. Charlie, don't you know what irrational means? Yes, I do. Anybody says Bonnie knows her own mind is out of his mind. Charlie, irrational means that... Don't get me emotionally involved or I'll turn off your rations. I'm still in charge of the irrationals around here, and don't you forget that. What was that you said about the human mind, Barney? Oh, the human mind is capable of unspeakable crimes. This expert says... To understand the true nature of a crime, you must develop the capacity to think like a criminal, no matter how unspeakable the crime. I wonder what's going on in Bonnie Brooks' mind right now. Well, like he said, it's normal for her to be completely irrational. Why don't you answer me, Bonnie? You hear me, I know you hear me. You could help us help you. Not talking this way, we don't know whether we're doing what you want us to do. You do want to stay with the wagon train, don't you? Have you got anybody out west you can go to? Would you rather we made arrangements for you to go back east? We can do that if you want us to. I'll take this out of here. No. Bonnie, you're going to get up off this bed in a few days and start living again. You can keep the baby things until then, all right? Don't you worry, you're not alone. You have friends, you understand? He murdered my husband. He killed my baby. Bonnie, he doesn't matter. You've got to get well again. You've got to forget him. Give yourself time. As long as he lives, I can. You can't replace love with hate. Charlie, how'd you get loose? Who are you talking about? I tied her up, honest, Mr. Cressetti, uh, just before I went to sleep. That tricky goose she said goodnight to Winsley. I knew she had something on her mind. You know how she gets out, Mr. Chris? I saw it in my dreams. I found out. She unties the knots. Yes, sir. Charlie, I didn't wake you up to tell you Hilda was loose. I want you to do me a personal favor. I tied her up, Mr. Chris, honestly, with a bowl and two half hitches. This goose has fooled me for the last time. I'll cook her. It's the last thing I do, Mr. Chris. And you get your favor, too. Are you going to listen to me, Charlie? Chris, will you look at that? She's back in that cage and the knots are tied again. She's smarter than both of us, ain't she? Speak for yourself, Charlie. Yes, sir, Mr. Fitt. Uh, are there any other favors I can do for you? Yes. As a matter of fact, there is. Don't you think three irrational meals a day are enough? Irrational? Yeah, and you know that could drive a man to unspeakable crime. <laughs> you don't believe me, you just ask Barney. 
I'm not asking anybody. I'm ordering you to keep an eye on Bonnie Brook. What are you so mad about? Troop said he was going to watch out for it. You got to feel him better. You're going to ride on up ahead tomorrow. And you're going to keep an eye on Bonnie Brook. I'm going to hold you personally responsible. If anything happens to her, I'll skin you alive. Well, what's got you so upset? Who's upset? You and your irrational cooking. Seeing that Bonnie sure upset him too, didn't it? Seeing a human being turn into a puppet would upset anybody, Charlie. Get away from them, Knox. You drive me to unspeakable crime yet. On company. I, uh, I saw your lamp burning. I figured two people who couldn't sleep are better than just one. What? It's, uh, it's awful not being able to sleep, isn't it? I don't want to sleep. Oh, I don't want to sleep either. You have bad dreams, too. Awful dreams. Awful. I wouldn't wish my dreams on my worst enemy. I close my eyes. And it happens again. You can't erase it, can you? Your husband is shot in the back. He dies in the dirt. Your child is born lifeless. I don't want to close my eyes. Never, never again. I know how you feel, Bonnie. I can help you. I know what you're suffering. I can make you forget. I am your friend. Now you want me to help you, don't you? I'm glad. We need each other. It'll be good for the both of us. I hope so. I know so. He had no right to do it, what he did. It was cold-blooded murder. He'll never rest until he pays for what he did. An eye for an eye. You will help me. I'll do more than help you. Tell me what to do. Now she's sad and lonely, just trying to forget. Another man pursues her. And this she'll soon regret. They say time heals all sorrows. And we hope that it's true. But a woman needs man's loving to drive away the blue. How come you know so much about Jack Evans chasing Bonnie Brook? Uh, there's nobody in the whole wagon train that doesn't know about it, Charlie, since she's been up and around. Well, you're so smart, tell me why. Well, that nobody can figure out. She sure doesn't have any of the things he goes for. I mean, like money or trinkets or anything like that. She's still numb with grief. Well, then why is he after her? I don't know. Why? I don't know, but I'm going to find out if it's the last thing I do. Well, it will be if you don't keep an eye on her and something happens to her. Are you threatening me? Did you forget what Mr. Chris said? Nobody can skin a man alive. <laughs> they can't? No. He'll die. Skin you alive. Ouch!
walk in the woods. You don't want to walk in the woods? You don't want to learn how to use a gun. And what do you want to do? You want to do what the law won't do, don't you? Yes. I must. I must. Now remember, you promised you would do exactly as I tell you. He killed my husband. He killed my baby. I have nothing to live for. Yes, you do. Now, you're going to make him pay. Just remember that. You're going to make him suffer. And I'm going to help you. A man is walking around who killed your husband, killed your child. The law won't do anything. So we will. We will. Now remember. This was your husband's gun. He never got a chance to use it. So you will. It's for him. For them. Now, ah. point it at me. Come on, point it at me. That's right. Now pull the trigger. That's good. Now, squeeze it. Squeeze it again. Squeeze the trigger. Good. Sleep, Marnie? Barney, wake up. I want to ask you something. It's in a matter of life and death, Charlie. It's a matter of my skin, I think. Oh, can't I wait till morning? That's what I want to ask you, Barney. Am I dreaming? I got the same feeling. What? Do you think I should wake up Mr. Chris and tell him it's the middle of the night, you know? Maybe you skin me alive. I know it's the middle of the night, Charlie. And why did you dream about waking Mr. Chris up? And I'd skin you alive if I was him, if that's what you want to know. Don't go back to sleep. You didn't answer me. I didn't dream this. You didn't dream what? That Jack Evans is free on getting Bonnie Brook to shoot the banker. What? That no good Evans is going to rob the bank by using Bonnie Brook. That's what I think. What do you think? I think you ought to eat your own cooking, Charlie. It's giving you nightmares. Barney, you've been studying crime. Now, when a man teaches a woman how to shoot a gun, what does that mean? It means he's got no sense. I'm serious, Barney. He's making her do it. Charlie, you can't make anybody do anything against their own will. You think I should wake up Mr. Chris and tell him right now? Charlie, you can't accuse anybody of murder without a corpus delecti. You know what Jack Evans could do to you for false arrest? No. Garnish your salary for 10 years. No. Yeah, sure, if he gets a habeas corpus and you don't have a corpus delecti, Mr. Chris would skin you alive for sure. Thank you, Barney. I, kn I knew you'd tell me the right thing to do. Yes, sir. <sighs> Scottsville? No, no trouble. I just got wind of something I think you should know about. Yeah. How long you been back? 
Uh, not long. An hour, maybe. You got any idea what's going on with Bonnie Brook? Well, I know all about how that Jack Evans has been hounding her. But I can't do anything about it. As far as I know, he's within his rights. You think Bonnie's well enough to know what's right? Well, she knows her own mind well enough to tell me to leave her alone. She's not the same girl she used to be. She doesn't seem to realize anybody else is alive. Well, the way it looks, she's getting along pretty good with Jack Evans. Yeah, he befriended her. Well, why? What's in it for him? If I knew that, I'd know more about what I should do. Well, Charlie claims that Evans is teaching her how to use a gun. Can't condemn anybody on what Charlie imagines. No, I reckon not. Anyway, the way Charlie's got it figured, uh, Evans is planning to use Bonnie to rob a bank. All the world is daft with thee and me, and sometimes I have my doubts of thee. I know what you mean, Chris. Now, I'm sorry I woke you. I'll see you in the morning. The coop. Might be a good idea to look in on her right now. She can't sleep and wanders around half the night. She might talk to you. Nothing else, you might get her to try to sleep. Insomnia is poison to the mind. Good night. Good night, Chris. Cooper Smith. I'd like to talk to you for a minute. What do you want? I don't want anything. Your husband and I were friends. I thought you and I were friends. Don's dead. His baby's dead. I know. That's what I want to talk to you about. scouting a couple of weeks ago. If you were Don's friend, why did you let that banker kill him? I'll try to explain everything to you. But let's not let the rest of the train know our business. I'm sorry to bother you at this hour. You do know what time it is, don't you? It's almost time. Sure it is. It'll be daybreak soon. Tomorrow will fix everything. That's right, Bonnie. Tomorrow everything's gonna be all right. You loaned my husband money, didn't you? You know what I'm gonna do? I heard you and Jack Evans have plans. I know how to use this now. I know you do. Who told you? Nobody told me, Bonnie. I just heard. I hate that banker. Do you hear that, too? No. But I can understand how you could. Bonnie, why don't you put that gun down? Tomorrow everything's gonna be fine. You wait and see. How did you know? You told me. You and I are friends, aren't we? 
You gave Don money. You are his friend. Why did you let that banker kill him? I'll try to explain everything to you tomorrow. Right now, you better get some rest. The sun will be up soon, and I've got to be going. What did he want? Who? Cooper Smith. He was just here. Did he ask you anything? Tomorrow everything will be all right. Did he see that gun in your hand? I don't know. I tell you, squeeze the trigger. Now. What's this I hear about you having it all figured out that Bonnie's going to rob the banker to get even? I don't care what Barney says. You don't need no hebus corpus delecti to tell that Jack Evans has got that girl in some kind of a stoop. Well, you get over to her wagon right now and don't let her out of your sight, do you understand? You go accusing that Jack Evans without a corpus delecti, it's going to be my neck. What are you talking about? Well, Barney told me. I don't care what Barney told you. Do as I tell you. Nobody's garnishing my salary. You wait and see. Chris. And I tried to talk to Bonnie last night. Well, uh, what happened? Charlie's right. Charlie's right about what? About Bonnie. I know, she doesn't make sense. But what do you want me to do, have her put away? Well, I'm just telling you. She could use that gun that Evans put in her hand. What do you mean, she could? All right, she would if it was pointed at that banker. She almost used it on me. I don't have no choice. Tomorrow when we get into Scottsville, I'll turn her over to the authorities. Chris, you... I don't like it any more than you do. Why do you think I gave her all this time? I was hoping she'd come out of it. Hadn't it been for that Evans, she might have. Yeah, but turn her over to the authorities. Isn't there anything else we can do? Well, during the war, I saw shell-shocked men shocked back to sanity. Mine's a spooky thing. Seems like nature turns it off when the pain gets unbearable. Like throwing water on a fire. That's right. When it dries out, a spark can rekindle it sometimes. A little encouragement, the fire's going full blast again. They're gone, both of them. Honest, I was going to tell you, Miss Chris, you asked Barney. Barney Brooks gone? Yeah, gone with Evans, rode off. Cool. Well, that paper's destroyed. Even if it wasn't, what good would it do you? Well, <laughs> I tell you, you're, uh, you're going to give me $5,000 on my signature this time. You can't blackmail me. Me? Would I be that stupid? Uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'll give you more on your trinkets this time than ever before. Uh, to show you that my heart is in the right place, if your collateral is worth $5,000, then I'm going to give it to you. You know what I'm going to do for you? To show you that my heart is in the right place this time? 
I'm going to sign a regular note paper so that uh, people won't accuse me of uh, stealing. Maybe get shot in the back, huh? Well, all right, if you insist on it. Uh, frankly, I think you're making a mistake. You see, signing only puts a backer in a better position. Well, let's say that I'm anxious to put you in a position that you've never been in before with me. Now, if you'll fill out the details and put 5,000 in an envelope, I'll step outside and get you the fanciest little collateral you ever did see. Uh, mind you, it's, it's no deal till I've had a chance to see the collateral. Oh, of course, of course. Uh, tell me something. Why didn't you tell the sheriff's inquest that I signed that loan for Don Brooks? Uh, 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 because I did sign it. You know that. <laughs> well, I hope you don't intend to shoot me in the back. Now, uh, why don't you just draw those curtains and uh, put some money in the envelope. I'll be right back with the collateral. Coop's not back tonight. You'll have to go after him, Bill. Don't tell him what might happen in her condition. I wouldn't want to be in that banker's shoes once he bumps into him. <laughs> no, I don't think she'd ever kill anybody. Well, this this expert from Scotland Yard says the person you you think you know you really don't know. The greater part of every human being's mind is hidden below the surface and might be compared to an iceberg, where we see only a re relatively minute part. Minute. Oh, minute part of the monster that is out in the open, the greater part being submerged. You don't say. <laughs> Man is essentially a beast and as bloodthirsty as the wildest animal. Only his conscience and his reasoning power sets him apart. It is my observation that the power for logic and reason, as well as what we call conscience, is the minute part of the man's brain that he exposes to society. It's when the greater submerged mind is without the control of the minute part that we have the phenomena. Phenomenon? Oh, yeah. Phenomenon of the classical criminal mind. What's all this fancy talk got to do with Coop riding out to stop a girl from putting some lead in the banker that killed her husband? Charlie, this explains how an innocent girl like Bonnie Brooke can have a criminal mind. You call horse feather. Listen, you butcher my hair and I'll show you a criminal mind at work. Well, I'd sure hate to be in Coop's shoes. Uh, Coop can handle the situation. Yeah, but a female criminal mind's kind of tricky. All female minds are tricky. Is that right, Bill? Well, it depends, Charlie. What's wrong with you people? Ain't no female going to outsmart Coop. I hope not. Well, what are we worried about, then? Now, you know exactly what you're going to do. Just uh, squeeze the trigger, remember? I remember. Good. Now, after it's over, don't forget your promise. You'll be able to sleep again. I won't forget a thing. Let's go. Don't you want to look at my collateral? I know this is breaking your heart. Maybe you should give me the envelope and you can see what I brought you after I've gone, huh? Give me the money. I know you're going to carry on like this. Bonnie? Bonnie, don't shoot. It's Cooper Smith. Don't shoot. Put that gun down, Bonnie. Look at me, you know who I am. 
I'm Cooper Smith. I'm not the man who killed your husband. Bonnie, don't shoot. He'll kill me. Bonnie? Bonnie! Nightmare's over. Oh. You only wounded him. The law will see that he gets what he deserves. I wanted to die. I wanted to die. I wanted to be with them. I'm so tired. Charlie, you don't believe that stuff about a goose laying a golden egg, do you? I sure do. Fourteen carat. <laughs> you and your habeas corpus delecti. Kind of a defective, are you, anyway? Now she's sad and lonely, but just like you and I. Facing life with all its strife, but smiling at the western sky. 